Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem SCF04. I call this one mastering the indirect method statement of cash flows, and this one is a hard one. So here we go. Below is information for Flyer Corps for the year ended December 31, 2019. Prepare the indirect method statement of cash flows. So I give you some comparative balance sheet information. I give you some additional information at the bottom. And my word of warning to you with this is there is information that is going to affect our statement of cash flows that may not be explicitly given. You might have to figure out some missing pieces. With that said, um, I'll give you a minute to try to solve this on your own. When you're ready, come on back and I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. You know, before the video, I said, I'll give you a minute to do it. I'm guessing it probably took more like 15 minutes to do it. So I hope you paused the video and, and actually did try it out. Um, with that said, let's go ahead and get this started. So first up, as with any financial statement, you're gonna need a header. So we have flyer, core, company name, statement of cash flows, and this is going to be for the year ended 12, 31, 19, so there's our header. All indirect method statement of cash flows start the same way. You've got your cash from operating activities section, and the first line will be net income, which in this situation, if we take a look at our given info at the bottom here, it tells us that net income for 2019 was $50,000. So there we go, $50,000. All right, now before I proceed, that's just kind of the, the basic every statement of cash flow or every indirect method statement of cash flow starts that way. Before I keep going, I'm gonna go ahead and do some, um, what I'm gonna call cleaning up of the given information um, that's going to help us uh, process this a little bit more efficiently. efficiently. So starting at the top, um, these are comparative balance sheet numbers. And so it's not that I care about the balance in these accounts for any one year, it's I care what the, change in the account was. And so what I'm going to do is I, I'm, I'm just going to jot down, um, I don't want to encroach on our space on the right here, so I'm going to squeeze it in right here and put a little delta symbol. Um, I'm going to figure out the change in the accounts. And so for accounts payable, year over year, this one went up $100,000. For the building year over year, this went up $200,000. Prepaid rent went down $12,000. Accounts receivable went down $50,000. Cash, we don't know because we were not given the 2019 number. That, of course, is going to be part of figuring out this statement of cash flows. Inventory looks like it went down by $12,000. Bonds payable went up by $40,000. And retained earnings looks like it increased by $43,000. So there's our changes in the accounts that occurred. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look down this list again, and I'm going to ask myself, does any of this stuff affect operating, investing, or financing activities as it relates to the statement of cash flows? And so if I look at accounts payable, that is probably going to affect our operations because that is cash that you may or may not be paying to your suppliers. Buildings typically is going to affect our investing activities. Um, prepaid rent, um, paying rent is part of your operations. Accounts receivable, exchanges with your customers, that's part of operations. Total cash, well, that's the whole point of the statement, but we are going to need that beginning cash number down at the bottom, so I'm gonna put a B next to that for bottom. Inventory, again, that's something you sell to your customers. That's part of operations. Bonds is debt that you're issuing, um, so that's part of your financing. And then finally, we have one here, retained earnings. And retained earnings does not show up on the statement of cash flows because retained earnings is a balance sheet number. But I'm not going to scratch it out just yet because we haven't dealt with this additional information at the bottom. And until I deal with the additional information at the bottom, I don't just don't feel comfortable scratching anything out. Um, and so we're going to just leave it there, although I'm not going to put a letter next to it because on the surface, it doesn't appear we need it in this problem. Now, looking down at that additional information next, um, it says a $50,000 building with accumulated depreciation of $40,000 was sold for $70,000 during the year. 
Now, this is a very interesting piece of information because it's basically giving us everything we need to prepare that um, uh, building sale uh, journal entry. And, and so I think it behooves us to, to say, what does that journal entry look like? And why might we want to know that information? So first of all, it says that um, we sold it for 70000 so cash received $70,000. We're selling a building that was fifty thousand with accumulated depreciation of forty thousand. So when we get rid of the building, we also have to get rid of the accumulated depreciation. So debit accumulated depreciation forty, credit building fifty. And why this is really interesting is because take a look at this. Um, this building had a book value of ten thousand dollars, fifty thousand historical costs less forty thousand accumulated depreciation. We got paid seventy thousand for it, and so what that implies is we profited, or we had what's called a gain on sale of sixty thousand dollars. We got paid sixty thousand more than the building was worth, and this is interesting because that gain on sale that is going to have to be something we deal with in our CFO section. And so I'm going to go ahead and write CFO next to that to make it clear that, hey, we're going to have to address this, okay? Um, if we look at the next item, Flyer Corps pays all dividends in the year declared. Well, that's nice to know, but there's nothing in this problem about dividends, is there? Well, not on the surface there's not. But how could we check whether or not Flyer Corps paid a dividend? Remember that retained earnings we didn't scratch out earlier? Retained earnings goes up as you earn net income. It goes down as you pay out dividends. And so if we do a simple retained earnings calculation, we say, okay, well, beginning RE plus net income, and in fact, I'm going to have to move this because I don't have enough space right there. I'm going to put it over here for now, and then I'll shrink it later. Um, beginning RE plus net income minus dividends equals ending retained earnings. We know that the beginning retained earnings was 35000 We know because we already wrote down in our problem that net income was 50000 And we know that ending retained earnings was 78000 But take a look. If we did not pay any dividends, we should have $85,000 in retained earnings. And we only have 78000 so what that tells us is we must have paid out a $7,000 dividend. So why does it matter that all dividends are paid in the year declared? Because guess what? That is CFF right there. That's a cash outflow for financing. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this CFF. And now I'm going to kind of sneak it off. Maybe I'll stick it in this corner up here. Nope, doesn't fit there. I'm going to shrink it down. You've seen it. So I'm just going to go ahead and shrink it really small. We'll remember it's there, and then I'll stick it up in this corner. So we've got that CFF to address. So now we've dealt with this, this bullet here. I'm, I'm going to put a, um, an F next to it to remind us to come back to it. I'll put that same F next to retained earnings to remind us to, to come back to that. And then our last piece of given info, net income was $50,000. We've already dealt with that. I'll go ahead and scratch that out. I think we've organized everything well enough at this point. And so let's go ahead and um, kind of... Uh, get started working through our, our pieces of information. We've got to continue with CFO. And so I'm going to look for everything that has an O next to it in this list. And, and, and remember, we've got this O down here as well. And we're going to go ahead and decide what do we need to do, if anything, with all of those operating activities. First up, accounts payable. It went up $100,000. If accounts payable went up, what that implies is we received something from our suppliers and we haven't paid for it yet. Assuming that that was a cost incurred, that means that net income was decreased by the amount of that payable. But since we haven't actually paid it yet, that was not CFO. That has not left our account. And so we are going to have to add that back. We're going to have to undo what it had done to net income because it reduced net income, but there was no cash outflow. So add back $100,000. That is due to an increase in accounts payable. That's the reasoning. That's just a description for it. And at that point, I can go ahead and 
you know, we've got so much work there. I don't necessarily want to scratch them all out. I'll just put check marks to them, next to them as we use them. Next up, the building. Oh, nope, that's investing. Let's skip it. Prepaid rent. Prepaid rent went down by $12,000. When a prepaid goes down, that suggests that you used it up and you have incurred that cost. Typically, the journal entry looks like something like this. Rent expense debit prepaid rent credit. Notice that journal entry reduces net income, but there is no cash outflow. It's the same situation as this increase in accounts payable, a reduction in net income that didn't involve a cash outflow. And so just like we did with AP, we're going to add that back. Because remember, the goal of this section is to get from cash from operations. That would, that's what we really want. So we've got to get all that non-cash activity out of our net income. So we're going to label this decrease in P rent, prepaid rent. All right. Next up in our O's. Oh, let me go ahead and check that one off. Sorry. Next up in our O's, we had a decrease in accounts receivable. Now, the reason accounts receivable goes down is because customers paid you, so you collected cash. Notice this journal entry that decreases accounts receivable results in cash in. So we are getting cash. But notice that that journal entry did not affect net income. So in other words, we have a cash inflow from operations that is not included in this number. Therefore, we're going to have to go ahead and put it in there. So decrease in AR, that's $50,000 more. Put a check next to that. The last O that we have in the, in the big list here is inventory. Inventory went down by $12,000. So if inventory went down net, right, there's probably purchases and sales in there, but if net it went down, that means there were more sales than there were purchases, which means you recorded this, cost of goods sold, inventory for $12,000. Notice here, there is a decrease to net income. There's a subtraction from net income but there is no cash outflow. This is the same situation as the increase in payables, the same situation as the decrease in prepaid rent, and it's going to be treated the same way. It decreased net income, but because that wasn't related to a cash outflow, we have to add that back to net income. We have to undo or remove the effect from net income. So this was decrease in inventory. Add back $12,000. Go ahead and check that one off. Last up in my CFO was the hidden one that we figured out down at the bottom. We had that gain on sale. Now, this gain on sale increases net income, and there was cash associated with it. But that cash, that's investing activity cash. That right there is CFI, right? The proceeds on the sale. And so there is no CFO associated with this gain. It made net income go up. We have to back that activity out. How do we do it? We subtract it. So we are going to take out $60,000 for the gain on sale. And that is all of the O's that we identified, the operating activities. So now we are going to finish off this section by saying net CFO and tallying all that up. Get my calculator out for this. Looks like we have our 50,000, our 100,000. We added another 12,000 to that. We sub, well, sorry, we added 50,000 more, and then we added another 12,000 more for, oh, sorry, I forgot the 60,000. And then we finally subtracted 60,000 for a grand total of 164,000 inflow from operating activities. All right, so that is CFO. Okay, that was a lot, right? But here's what I'm going to do. I am going to go ahead and copy all of our notations to the next slide with us. Just leave the CFO piece here and give us a little bit more room to work where we will finish off the other sections of the statement of cash flows. Let me just get all of this aligned where it goes. I think that's good enough. Um, so here we go. The next section after CFO is CFI. So we need to go down our list and we need to identify our I's. We have the increase in building as an I. And don't forget down here, we have this cash coming in from selling buildings is also an I. 
Now here's the deal. This one's going to be a little strange because on the surface, it looks like buildings went up 200,000. And therefore you can say, hey, we bought buildings. And so that is an outflow of $200,000. But remember, that's the net change in buildings. And look what happened down here. Down here, we actually sold a building, a $50,000 building. So buildings actually went down 50, and then they went back up to 600,000, which actually means that we didn't have a change of 200,000 increase in our buildings. We actually had a change of 250,000 because this 400,000 that we started with, we lowered it by 50. We lowered it to 350,000 because of this sale. And so the actual increase then, the actual buildings bought was 250, not 200. So I'm gonna scratch that and say 250 was bought. So from CFI perspective, capital expenditures, typically a phrase you'll see when it comes to buying PP&E expenditures, we spent $250,000. Cash outflow, 250. Our other uh, CFI that we had was the money we actually received from selling the building. We got cash of 70,000, and so we would put that on there as proceeds from sale. And normally we write of building, but I'm running out of room, so I'm just gonna put inflow, 70,000. I'm gonna go ahead and check those off. So we've used this one, we've used that one. That's all the I's that we had identified. So now we're gonna go ahead and subtotal that section and that is gonna come out to a 180,000 outflow net CFI. Last section is our, in, uh, our financing activity section. So we've got CFF. And so now we just need to identify all of the CFF items that we originally had. Um, that is going to be the bond payable that went up 40,000. That implies that we took on more debt or we received money for the debt. So we call that issuance. We could say issuance of debt or issuance of bonds, $40,000 cash inflow. And then we've got our special one to deal with, right? Remember I put the F by retained earnings and the F down here by the dividends because really what it is, it's this right here. This is what we're dealing with. We know that we paid out a $7,000 dividend. So we'll say payment of dividends outflow 7,000. If I go through and just clean up real quick, um, we dealt with the bond payable. We've dealt with this retained earnings slash dividend situation. Oh, and at this point, because we have dealt with the CFI in this transaction, as well as the adjustment to building in this transaction, as well as the gain in this transaction, notice this transaction really was a whopper on the whole problem. Um, we have now dealt with it in full, so we'll scratch it out as well. So we've pretty much used all the information we have. We'll go ahead and tally up that CFF section. That's going to come out to a $33,000 inflow net CFF. At that point, we simply need to finish off our statement of cash flows by including the bottom tallies. I'm gonna scroll that up a little bit and scroll this down a little bit just to give us a little bit more room to work. The next thing that comes is our net change in cash. So net change in cash, which is just the subtotal of all of the other sections. So we had 164 from net CFO. We then had a minus 180 for our CFI, and then we had plus 33 for our CFF. So our net change in cash was a meager $17,000 inflow. We typically list the beginning cash balance next, which we know was $80,000 um, from the given information. And so we would then add the 80,000 and the 17,000, which of course at this point, I don't need my calculator for that that is gonna come out to $97,000 ending cash balance. And we are officially done with our entire statement of cash flows. All right, whew, that was a lot. Um, this is why I call this one mastering the indirect method statement of cash flows because 
There is so much going on in this problem, and to keep track of it all really requires a super in-depth understanding of what's happening here. Um, obviously, the biggest catch in this whole problem was the sale of that building. Realizing that you had cash from investing from the proceeds from the sale, realizing that you had an adjustment to CFO because of the gain on the sale, and realizing that you actually had to adjust the change in buildings, the, the purchase of buildings, to account for the fact that you had this sale that reduced the value um, from 2018 before it went back up again to 2019, which, which changed the calculation of what you actually did um, um, uh, buy in terms of buildings. So that was, that was a whopper right there. And then, of course, the other hard piece of this was recognizing that there was a dividend in this problem, even though it didn't explicitly tell you that. Um, this is definitely a, a high-level difficulty problem. This would not be the norm of, of the type of difficulty problem students would, would typically see, um, especially in, say, an introductory course. But, but I, I give it to, to kind of just show you the nuances that go into this and to really put you to the test of do you understand how everything in here is, is connected. Um, so hopefully you did find this exercise helpful, even if it was on the hard side. And I hope you join me for another video.